News Channel 3 at 10. Hello, I'm John White. And I'm Tamara DeMonte. The family of the victims in the 2005 McGowan murder-suicide is now speaking out as the FBI investigation into the Riverside County District Attorney's Office continues. Now, earlier tonight, we showed you an exclusive interview with Karen McGowan's sister. She says the District Attorney's Office lied to them about the causes behind the tragedy that claimed six lives. News Channel 3's Nathan Baca has more on this story. You'll only see right here, and we want to warn you, some of the descriptions you're about to hear are quite graphic. Man on one, state your emergency. Sheriff's Department, how can I help you? This is how it ended for the McGowan family, all apparently at the hands of DA investigator David McGowan. Karen McGowan and children Paige, Chase, and Rain lived in the Garner Valley house with their grandmother Angie. While Sheriff's deputies scrutinized the mountain home where the murder-suicide happened, the district attorney's office was quick to state McGowan was not facing unusual stress at work. But Karen's sister Kelly says she knows otherwise. I don't trust the veracity of the report. I don't trust the veracity of those in charge of coming to a conclusion and telling me what happened. I don't trust. I have been lied to point blank. I don't trust... Luis Bolaños is McGowan's former partner, who says his bosses told McGowan to lie on a major investigative report. McGowan then went to the FBI. The 20-year veteran cleared his work desk days before the murder-suicide. There's a group of individuals from the DA's office, from ex-chief Clay Hudson, ex-assistant chief Rick Nelson, ex-supervising investigator Jim Bain, that what they have in common, they all lied. They lied through their teeth. And they did that to protect themselves. Kelly describes inconsistencies in the official report that led them to believe the district attorney's office is lying about something. We were told absolutely no one in that home knew what was coming. The police officer told me unequivocally Andrew was awake and saw it coming. The paramedic told me, same thing, verified it. I know that because I viewed the crime scene photographs. So we were told, number one, no one had any, any idea this was coming. Well, we now know that Angie did. We were told there was no suicide note. There is this missing handwritten letter that I haven't seen, I don't know about, wasn't shared with me. However, the paramedic is saying that it was there. Sheriff Bob Doyle announced a presumed suicide note with the lyrics to a Los Lonely Boys song had been prominently placed near David's computer. First responders told Kelly the lyrics were buried in a pile of papers, and Karen McGowan was an avid guitar player. I was also struck by the amount of blood that was supposedly tracked through that home on one bloodied sock. I was also very alarmed by the fact that the gravity was defied with the bleed out of Paige. She was shot in the head. Gravity would have dictated that that blood would have flowed down to the carpet in the opposite direction of her hip, which is where David, within seconds of shooting Paige, stepped up with one, shot, one foot to shoot Rain back down, blood-soaked sock to walk through that house, check on every other body in there, up the stairs, and lose the trail on the way back down. This is inconceivable to me. The district attorney's office has withheld comment, stating they are fully cooperating with the FBI's investigation. Nathan Baca, KESQ, News Channel 3. And if you are just tuning into our reports into the district attorney's office, you can log on to our website, that of course, KESQ.com. Just go to the News tab and click on the link inside the DA's office and Desert Hot Springs Police. New at 10 tonight, Valley.